So here's the next type of integral that we might consider. I guess this is sort of section two, if you like. So these are integrals of the form, it's going to be either sine or cosine in each of these, but we have just some multiple of x, possibly two different, mul well, two different multiples of x, right? Because if they're, if they're the same, you'd combine them. Um, so these, these are integrals that you're, you're less likely to encounter as you're working your way through calculus, so it's probably not going to pop up in, you know, polar coordinates so much or, or, or multiple integrals. Where you will run into these, if you do continue on, is if you ever take sort of, you know, either an advanced course in differential equations or maybe something with mathematical physics, where you're evaluating Fourier series, the sorts of calculations that you have to do when you're doing Fourier series, um, they frequently involve integrals of this type, and you're doing them constantly, all the time. Um, and so it's good to know how to do them. Now, the trouble with these is not that there, there's no real cleverness involved in any of these. Um, it's not like the, the ones we were just looking at where there's lots of different cases and you've got to think about what you should do. The trouble with them is, is that they rely on these, these complicated product to some identities which are really hard to remember. Nobody really remembers these, right? Um, so perhaps what's useful to remember because, you know, Let's say your, your instructor doesn't let you have a formula sheet and you run into one of these on a test and you need to, need to know what to do. Um, hopefully what you do remember are the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine. And they all derive from that. And in fact, one of the ways that you can, you can do this is you can play around and you can work your way backwards. So let me, let me sh do it directly and then I'll sort of, sort of go over how you might do this if you were stuck. Okay? So first of all, Direct application of the identities, we'll do this example. So we have sine times cosine. We're in the middle here, right? With m is equal to 5, n is equal to 2. So all we have to do is apply this identity and say, okay, so it's going to be 1 half. Um, so we're going to do so m minus n. 5 minus 2 will be 3. So it's going to be 1 half sine 3x. Okay plus, and now we do m plus n, so 5 plus 2, we get sine 7x. Okay, and we know how to do these. I mean, it's a simple u substitution. At this point, you probably don't even bother writing those substitutions down, right? We just say, okay, so this is going to be, it's going to be minus 1 over 6 cos 3x minus 1 over 14 cos 7x plus c. And there, yeah, you have it, right? That's, that's all there is to it. Um, but like I said, it's probably not, you know, I mean, this is how you want to do it. If, if you remember the identities, that's it. It's, it's two lines, you're done, and, and you're happy, right? And all of these ones is the same story. They're all very easy if you remember the identities, um, but you probably don't. So what we might do is we might go back and say, okay, how, how do we actually come up with these, right? So we come down here and we'd say, okay, so I notice that sine of 5x plus 2x, right? So that's sine 7x. So I say 5x plus 2x, so that's going to be sine 5x cos 2x plus sine 2x cos 5x. And then I'd come back and I'd say, and by the way, sine of 3x, well that's sine of 5x minus 2x, right? So you think about adding or subtracting these. That's how we're getting to there. Right? And then you do these identities. So this is now going to be sine 5x cos 2x. But then it's going to be minus sine 2x cos 5x. Right? So the point is that you now add the two equations together. Right? 
And because these have opposite signs, they're going to cancel. And so what you get is that sine of 7x plus sine of 3x is equal to 2 sine 5x cos 2x, right? And divide by 2, you've got the identity, and you proceed. Right? So it's, it's not that much more work. Um, so remember that ultimately when it comes to you know, identities that you need to know, the only identities that you really need to know, the Pythagorean identity and these addition formulas, pretty much everything else derives from them. Right? If you can memorize all these extra identities, great. It'll save you two minutes. If you can't memorize them all, it's very easy to kind of rederive the results. So it's up to you. If, if you've got lots of storage space, go this way. If you're short on storage, but you know, your processor is good, maybe you take this approach instead. Um, for each person, it's going to be a decision as to which approach makes more sense.